Buddha means a person who is enlightened. So Gautama become, became Buddha. As you people now have become Sahaja Yogis. But because he went through all these various penances, whatever he learned became part and parcel of him. But in Sahaja Yoga it is all Sahaj. So we always conclude everything that this is after all Sahaj. And when we try to work out anything, we always say, oh, it will work out spontaneously, it's all right, mother will do for us. This is a common feeling with Sahaja. So whether to put you all through that long process or to give you realization was a question before me. Because in these days of confusion, there cannot be much time to put you through all which Buddha had gone and he was one individual, I had to put all of you. That would have been very difficult, I don't know how, how many would have sustained it. Most of them would have dropped out halfway or maybe quarter of the way. So, it was done in a Sahaj manner. <coughs> you did not have to sit in a banyan tree, ultimately you got your realization. Your Kundalini was awakened and you got your enlightenment. But that enlightenment which settled in Buddha is not settled in us because our chakras were not cleansed as he had cleansed his chakras. We <coughs> had the same body, the same mind and the same attitude when we got realization. As we were looking at the house of God, still we are looking at the house of God, but you have entered inside the house and you have to look out from the windows, this you forget. And though we are sitting now on a hilltop, out of all the congestion and all the traffic, still you see a car, you get right. You don't know you are sitting on top of a hill where your mother has put you nicely. <clears throat> and that is how you try to behave. When I get reports about Sahaja Yogis, I'm quite amazed that they do not know that they are realized souls now. That's why Buddha talked of desirelessness. It's not possible before realization, even after realization I find it's difficult. Some sort of a subtle desire exists and where you have to work it out, you do not work it out saying that our ego will be catch. So wherever it suits us, we work that way, wherever it suits, we work this way. The solution of the whole thing is what, which I found out myself, was this, that it's a collective happening. A person who is an individual can never get over his ego. Individualistic person cannot get over his ego. The one who lives individually, wants to enjoy everything individually, can never get over his ego because you have not gone through all that penances. Or else, if you are an individual, then you better go through all these penances and then come back. So the solution is to wash all our chakras, cleanse our life in the collective. And this is what was 
the solution of the problem of ego. Formerly, everybody worked out individually. Like that, to go to Himalayas, take some guru, then the guru will throw him out, then he'll go to another guru, then work there, then he'll throw it out. Then next like he'll be born again, again he'll be thrown out. Ultimately, if one guru accepts, all right, well, whether he's beaten up, he's tortured, he's <laughs> cheated everywhere, <laughs> hanged up, press it down. And then, ultimately, if any guru gets nearer to any one individual, he would give him realization. This was the situation. But in Sahaja Yoga, the door is open, anybody can come in, anybody. Get your realization. Because I have faith in collectivity. This collective life will definitely give you what Buddha got through his individual efforts. But there also we fail that we do not know how to be collective. Individualism is all the time around us, in every way we think of individuals. Wherever collectivity has worked, Sahaja Yoga has prospered. And wherever it has not worked, there has been a problem. So it is very important that we should look at ourselves and see for ourselves and see how much collective we are. Do you enjoy collectivity or not? Are you aiming at collectivity or not? As soon as I thought of this Kabela place you have seen and I thought that I'll make a little ashram there near the river for you. Immediately people said, Mother, is it all right if we buy our own houses here? Immediately. Then what is the purpose? And then they will call me, Mother, please come to my house for dinner, please come to my a little house for uh, some tea. Well, I'm not interested. So in Sahaja Yoga, unless and until you really become collective in every sense, you cannot ascend and you cannot wash yourself, you cannot cleanse yourself. This point he did not say, but in a way he did say, because he has said, Buddham Sharanam Gacha. First I surrender myself to my Self-realization. Then he said, Dhammam Sharanam Gacha means, the dharma in me, I myself surrender to that dharma. That is spirituality. And thirdly, he said, Sangam Sharanam Gachami. Sangam means collectivity. I surrender myself to the collectivity. But he did not know how to give Amas realization at that time. So he got hold of disciples who had to shave off their heads, whether you are a queen or a king, who had to wear only one cloth, whether you are a man or a woman, who had to have only one uh, mat to sleep, in a big hall, no husband and wife, no marriage, nothing. And they had to beg their food in the village and feed the Guru and also they themselves 
had to eat that food whether it was sufficient or not. That is not in Sajuk. Everything is enjoyable in Sajuk from the very beginning. And we are supposed to be absolutely joyous people in Sajuk. That is there, but the joy of the collectivity, if you do not know how to enjoy, then you cannot ascend, because there's no other way out. What is the other penance? For some people, even collectivity is a penance, till they start enjoying it. And they are very troublesome, this is not good, very critical. Some of them stay in the ashram and criticize everything all the time, this is not good, I don't like this, I don't like that. So here, in complete awareness, I mean, you cannot be mesmerized. If you are mesmerized, then you can live whatever way you like. But in complete awareness and full understanding, we have to become collective. This is one of the solutions for our cleansing. We can say like this, supposing uh, my hands are dirty. So I go to one tap and I find this one drop coming. So can't wash. So I go to another place, there's no water. Third place, I find there is nothing available. Ultimately, I reach the place where I find some water. Then I wash myself completely because I know I can't find it anywhere else. But in Sahaja Yoga, you are immersed in the water of collectivity. If you enjoy this collectivity and can swim in that, then there is no problem. 